Hey hamster, remember that one time Monster Hunter actually had a decent story? Now that you mention it... I have really no idea what's going on. I'm finally happy again. Oh, she even stood up! She's not wearing pants either! Yeah, let's go! Ooh, cutscene, cutscene, cutscene! We have a creepy elder, we have the fan service, and we have the big, strong, quiet guy. We are all set for an anime. There's something happening in a Monster Hunter game. It's Santa with his giant candy cane mustache. You go, Santa. Yep, that made sense. Oh, yep, let's get a nice crotch shot of the guild marm. That was Gormagal. No, my, no, no. Okay, we're dead. We're just dead. No, we're gone. We're dead. We're dead. Don't, don't even play this game. No, we're dead. We're all gone. Oh god. Oh god. I'm so freaking scared. I missed. That's how scared I am. Let's forget about that Gormagala completely because we were having a beach party. Okay, so we seem to be communicating with each other, which is something that doesn't normally happen. This is so much fun. Nope. Since we're going back to cover the past mainline Monster Hunter games, it's important that we remember what made each one different and interesting, and what made each one suck. Oh, come on! We need to be fair to each game and judge them in comparison to each other. Okay, fine. And what made each one suck by comparison? Better? Uh, anyway, so Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is still one of the best Monster Hunter games, even in 2020. Considering how the vast majority of this game is nothing but an overly ported and patched paid DLC update to a game that originally came out in 2004, that isn't exactly saying a lot. As the positive gamer, it only makes sense that I focus on all of the good brought to the table with Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. And as the critical gamer, I'll tell you the truth. That is so not how it works! This game had so many cool new improvements from the past entries in the famous Hunter Looter series like new weapons, enhanced climbing and overall verticality, monster mounting, and being able to play wirelessly with online friends. Is the first game a joke to you? Yes. Huh. Noted. But still, don't oversell those updates. Like I said before, this game is basically just a mod of 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 a Are mod you done? of a mod of a mod of a mod of a PS2 game. So, with hundreds of quests, with nearly a hundred different monsters to hunt, this game is packing some substantially monstrous content. You'll even gain the ability to free hunt in the wild Everwood, unlocking uniquely randomized quests that level up their difficulties each time you complete them, all the way to an absurdly powerful level 140 for some devastating battles and amazing rewards. Admittedly, World learns a lot from 4U in terms of gameplay mechanics but not nearly enough in terms of what makes repetitive quest grinding feel like a satisfying story progression. I will agree, 4 Ultimate does an awesome job at really making you feel like you're constantly getting stronger as well as having a real goal and purpose through story progression. I gotta say, this game is laughably easy in low rank, but climbs to ludicrous new heights in G rank, especially with those randomized Everwood endgame quests. If you like hitting monsters until they die, then this game has a lot of monsters to hit. Until they die. It's like an extremely long and slow game of whack-a-mole where the mole has a billion HP and you've got like 12 different mallets to choose from. You can watch our extensive various arena and main quest series with over a collective 200 episodes to see all the monsters to whack, shameless plug. I'm sure nobody wants to see you whack it. They definitely prefer to just whack it themselves. Did you happen to play three ultimates on the 3DS? Well, I'm here to report there were virtually no improvements to this game in the graphical department. But the game looks fine! Plus, you can't discount all the cool environments and monsters we got this time around. No monsters, you say? Here's how I feel about all of them. Small monsters! The brilliant idea of having armored insects hitching rides on large monsters Remora style, giving them extra natural padding, gets completely unjustified when these little pissed off pill bugs come rolling your way like Sonic the Hedgehog knocking you off that massive cliff you just climbed for the hundredth time! Gross baby frog sharks that can straight up quadruple in size by sucking away gallons of your blood. It's a miracle you're still standing after that. That. Large monsters! It's Bizarios again, but super rare and sparkly. Uniquely discovered only in the Everwood. Can we please have more secret rare monsters like this? Admittedly, the coolest flagship monster we have ever gotten, bringing along a unique frenzy mechanic for combat which can reanimate and possess other monsters. An absolute blast to fight. Creepy mucus spraying flying squirrel elephant pig monkey. 
creepy fire-flinging flying squirrel elephant pig monkey. A giant snake is an amazing idea for a monster, but something about this guy's understandably limited animations and attacks make him disappointingly annoying and boring to fight. The only subspecies to be granted the ability to conquer the frenzy virus and go full on apex. Why? Good question. Disgustingly horrifying massive spider with a unique fighting style that never gets old and is always guaranteed to creep me out. Instead of being draped in the usual Gipsaros hides, this Nursilla shrouds itself in a Keizu carcass, because that was the only way they could possibly imagine it any creepier. And they were right. I would call this a more moderately sized giant insect, but it's still bigger than a minivan. Yeah, exoskeletons don't work like that. Subspecies initially seemed like cheap padding to make the game feel bigger than it really was. And then we got hyper and tempered monsters. Miss these guys yet? An awesome monster team-up combo fight, though I'm not sure yet if we're actually just interrupting a particularly violent mating ritual. An even more violent mating ritual, where the dominant queen straight up uses her male as ammo in a cannon blast attack, killing him in the process! Don't worry, she could just dig up a new one out of the dirt. Come on, guys, you can do better than her! She's just going to hurt you! That steamy bug sex is so not worth it! An awesome new flying wyvern introduced in owning the new bleed mechanic, because no other monster in history was strong enough to actually injure you until now. Angry Bullfrog. Explosive Angry Bullfrog. Explosive Angry- w wait, what? Freaking Tigrex? He's notably massive and slow at first until the fight progresses and he gets faster and faster like an unstoppable explosive freight train. You expected a giant land shark monster and instead got an inflatable frog with an unsettlingly large devilish smile. Desert bound, this Xamtrios variant knows not the meaning of the word tired. Gen Moran again, just shorter and pointier on the exact same stage, and fought nearly identically. Can somebody please explain why he's here over Jen? The largest mainline monster to date, making for one impossibly ridiculous but intense final battle. And here's his Ronald McDonald cosplay. One of my favorite final boss Elder Dragons ever. This intense tar-spitting beast feels more like you're battling Godzilla with his explosive death beams. He's even got a Dragonator lodged in his back for God's sakes, and he just shrugged the darn thing off like, oh, this? Yeah, my back kinda itches. Is something back there? Whoa, it looks amazing! An icy black Kieran! Wait, that actually sounds awful. Let's never fight that ever. After molding its black shed skin, Gormagala becomes one of the coolest final bosses in the franchise with some killer music. I'm so glad that's a reoccurring thing. Something horrible goes wrong during molting, causing Gore and Shigaru to mutate into one twisted and insanely powerful dragon of death fighting through its own corrupted fury. And those were just all the new monsters. This game is still jam-packed with tons of old returning monsters too. Before moving on from graphics, it's important to note the wide variety of color in this game, really bringing it all to life. From vibrant character costumes and armor to various lush landscapes, this game does look pretty great. That's the nicest thing you've said all for the 3DS. Huh. <sighs> and since 3U looks pretty good as well, that isn't much of an achievement. Moving on! So why does this Monster Hunter have a better story than all the others? Yeah, a good question considering none of them had good stories to begin with. Now hold on, 4 Ultimate does a great job at establishing a need for hunting and making the player feel like they're actually doing something that makes a real difference. The devs at Capcom really aren't just banging rocks together resulting in constant innovations in game design, let me tell you. Instead of the normal slew of hunting requests where the player constantly slays increasingly stronger monsters for their local village, You'll be teaming up with a traveling caravan and venturing on a quest to uncover the story behind a mysterious white scale, all the while stopping in various villages and providing your hunting expertise in exchange for materials and information on your journey. There still aren't really any named characters or any semblance of a character arc to be found here, but it's still at the very least, when compared to the past Monster Hunter games, a little effort in the storytelling department goes a long way but feels kind of like taking a physically abused child to his neglectful grandparents' place for the weekend, where he's given a popsicle as a small semblance of unrequited affection. It's not like he's in a good place now or anything, but by comparison, it seems like an overall temporary improvement. Your analogies are so weird. Just because you take a beaten child from his family for a while, he's still going to feel like crap when you give him a small dose of normalcy. Then he's going to realize what he's been missing all along when he goes back to that smelly, malevolent hellhole! Do, uh, you want to talk about something? And he goes right back alright, because Generations tells a story about as well as I can play the trumpet with my butt. I kind of want to hear you try. Then finally, the social services come and take the poor kid away, but give him to a family of uppity hoity toity douchebags who honestly try their best to take care of him, but just make things worse every time they fake their heartless indifference. What? World. The story in World is trash. And for Ultimate? It's an intermediary state of abnormal adequacy. 
All right, so with that out of the way, let's move on to the music section and get you off to a shrink. Why didn't anyone ever love me? Monster Hunter has always had some incredible music, and with so many returning monsters with unique killer themes, this game's soundtrack is massive and incredible. We didn't even talk about my favorite mechanic of this game, the infected and apex monsters, infused with Gormagala's frenzy virus, and the brilliant sound design of altered roars and snarls absolutely sells the freaky terror of these monsters overcoming a deadly virus zombie style. It's crazy. I definitely think later games could really use that mechanic, but regardless, the sound design here is top-notch. Even though a lot of the sound effects are ripped directly from the first game and pasted into this one like a certain overly abused celebratory potion consumption animation, but let's move on. I can say with absolute confidence that this is the best Monster Hunter game pre-world. Hot take, this is still the best Monster Hunter game in some regards. If you've still got a 3DS floating around, then definitely give this game a shot. And don't worry about potentially needing to solo it all. Honestly, I find that to be the most thrilling way to play it. Then to reach true enlightenment, watch all my old cringy videos from my second oldest Let's Play series. Then when you reach this video, at the end of the playlist, you'll have to start them all over again! The positive gamer in me had a great time with Monster Hunter 4 Ultimates, giving it a powerful 9 out of 10. I had a blast with this game, and thankfully all my favorite first time bouts are recorded on YouTube to go back and relive. It's a really strange feeling, but with a game this fun and hectic, it's definitely a game worth remembering. And for the fun of it, I'll post a few links in the comments section of a few of my absolute favorite episodes. The critical gamer in me sees the decade-old repeated faults in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, but can look past most of them to give it a strong 7 out of 10. In comparison to past Monster Hunter, it's incredible. But in comparison to the standards of the industry, it's just a little above average. It's still a great deal of fun with a great deal of new ideas and content to keep you hooked for this several hundred hour potential time sink. But what do you think? Tell us how your positive and critical sides rate Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate in the comments below. I guess you can't truly love a game unless you can criticize it. Because if you're just blindly praising a game and claiming it's perfect, then you're just playing with yourself. Stop that, it's gross. Seriously. I just want to point out that I have to wear these pins without the backing on these things, and they've been stabbing me for the entire episode because I can't find where they are. <laughs> I'm literally bleeding for this one! <laughs> hey! Do you have an idea for a new episode of Playing With Myself? Well, join the discussion over on Discord using the new Patreon perks to nominate and vote for future episodes. The Patreon members get first picks, so check out the links in the description for some more information. And as always, thank you to our amazing Patreon members, Atomic Thomas, Cameron Arrow, Kai, Ben, Rowan, Erica, SquadFam, Sid, and Denny. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like the videos and subscribe for more. I will see you guys in the next video. Boy! Yeah. That's about the gist of this video.